For those of you that follow my channel, you know I've been working on a chair project and I've had part one and two. I was hoping this would be part three. On the bright side, I'm really getting to know my new nail gun and miter saw. Meanwhile, for this week's video, I'm going to be redoing the top of a china closet. The bottom is going to be saved for another project, a challenge coming up later. So I lay the piece on its back with some help and also use some bun feet that I got at Lowe's and the little uh, plates that you put on. It just makes it real easy. Uh, just make sure your screws are the right size so you don't screw through the, the bottom of the piece and then just screw those legs in. It really couldn't be easier to change uh, things up and add legs. My inspiration for this piece is kind of a fancy shoe closet. It could end up being just a, a curio cabinet too, but I'm removing the two middle drawers and also the magnetic latches that came on it. I'm leaving that light in the top, um, again, to be fancy in someone's closet. Cleaning the piece with a concentrated solution of Dixie Bell's White Lightning, a TSP cleaner, and also don't forget to rinse it off whenever you um, use that because that way your paint adheres properly. Now I'm using some mud and I'm filling up those holes that were left whenever I removed those latches. I decide it would be easier to get the corners of the piece while it's laying on the back. So I use this Klingon brush that I rarely use because it's really kind of weird the way it's bent. But for this situation, it was really the perfect choice. So I just want to make sure I'm getting those corners because when I do the decoupage in on the back, which is my plan, I think it will be kind of hard then to cut in these areas. So. I'm just trying to make it a little easier on myself. I am using Fiery Sky in the silk line um, of paints from Dixie Belle. This is an all-in-one paint, meaning it has a primer and a sealer built in. Next, I am using Dixie Belle's Clear Coat in Satin as my decoupage medium. The paper I am using is actually a wrapping paper that I bought locally, so I think it was probably um, printed locally. And I think it's a really cute pattern. It's on craft paper, but it's a very light weight, so I have to be careful not to tear it. Um, I think the pattern is really cute with all those fancy chairs on it. So I really am struggling with this because it's hard to reach inside this cabinet. I'm actually filming this through the glass door that remains on the side. So I have to kind of reach in there and it's really high. So I have to work my way around the piece. So I'm just kind of doing a bottom third at a time on each side and working my way up. Some wrinkles remain in it and I'm okay with that. I use the clear coat on top of the paper once I have it in position. I'm getting a few streaks of the fiery sky in there every now and then and I'm just kind of working it out and it'll be okay. I'm probably going to do some dark wax on it anyway. Plus there'll be shelves in there. So I think it's not to worry.
When the piece was stood up, it clearly needed a top. So looking to my stash, I found some table leaves that I could modify and piece together for the top. The little spikes and corresponding holes in the table really helped me to piece this together, but I also used construction adhesive. I pieced it out on the table and then got the most stable piece glued in place with construction adhesive first and then began to put the rest of the pieces on from there. Don't worry, it looks kind of like a hot mess now, but you'll see how it comes together. I used construction adhesive and put all the pieces on the top. Here I am using gilding wax to make impressions on those little spiky things that come out, and then I'm holding the wood up against it to mark where I need to drill. The rest of them were all put together properly with the holes, but I had to piece it. I actually made a mistake on my first cut, which kind of screwed everything up. So I had to improvise. So I drilled holes and they actually fit perfectly. I made sure everything was level every step along the way. There are some gaps, but you'll see how we fix those gaps. While I was waiting for things to dry, I began the work on the inside peeling the excess paper from the decoupage along the top. I spared you the details, but that part took a lot longer than necessary when I realized that I had the blade facing in the wrong direction. And now the mudding begins. All the little holes uh, that were left from the joinery of the table pieces, the leaves. While I wait for the mud to dry, I start to paint on the inside. I'm not trying to pose like a model. It just happened that the fan was drying, so my hair was blowing. So now I am creating some texture to hide all of the sins on the top of the piece where everything was pieced together. I'm using Black Sands Silk and I'm adding the texture additive salt water to it. I'm just stirring it up with a fork and then I use two of my oldest, crappiest brushes and apply the uh, paint and texture additive mixture to the top of the piece. I mainly work wherever there's anything that needs to be covered up and then allowing that the mud has texture, I mainly put it on the smooth areas as well. So you'll see it kind of all blends together. Just use a pouncing motion to apply the salt water paint mixture. After that coat, I use another coat where I'm just painting very liberally with the black sands alone, just to fill in and to um, just make sure that there's no mud or anything showing the bare wood or any seams. Whenever you have a piece of furniture where there's 
really rough texture and you're either in a hurry and want to flip it pretty quickly, maybe don't fight with it <laughs> instead of um, trying to make it totally smooth, uh, give it some added texture and it's kind of like camouflage. Now I'm applying black wax. You may or may not have noticed that I only used one coat of the Fiery Sky paint. I really liked the way it looked on the wood. I often do that with black paint and with the all-in-one mineral paint uh, with the sealer and the primer built in, you're able to do that more frequently. Um, I also love the way the black wax just stays in all the cracks and crevices and I used it very heavily and I didn't use clear wax first. That's another benefit of the all-in-one paint. Remember how our piece looked in the beginning? Here's our quick turnaround. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. Visit us at LaVintageDecor.company and on Instagram we're LaVintageDecor and on Facebook we're LaVintageDecor Altoona. Stay well!